Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over 1B2 type 2. So I'm on page 7 and we're going to be looking at difference and sum of squares today. So I'm going to take you back a little bit, back to unit 1A. Um, if we're in class we would do a discovery on this. Um, if you're watching this from home this is just a quick tidbit about what we did in class. So when you multiply polynomials x minus 3 times x plus 3. Notice these are pretty much the same factor except for different signs, which we talked about in 1a, that means they're conjugates. So I've got x times x is x squared, and then plus 3x minus 3x, and then minus 9. So when you have conjugates, because you have plus 3 and you have minus 3, these cancel out and you end up with no x term in the middle. You just end up having x squared minus nine. So that's coming from all of this, right? It's a minus nine because it's minus three times positive three. And that's always gonna happen when you have conjugates because you have a positive times a negative. So when you think about factoring wise, this has a zero term in the middle and you have negative nine on the outside. So that's where this leading question is going. What multiplies to negative nine and adds to zero? That would be positive three and negative three. So negative nine is what you'd multiply by, and then you have the two middle terms, which are positive three and negative three. So that's how you would split it back up. When you have x minus 3i times x plus 3i, this you haven't really seen yet, but you have done conjugates with imaginary numbers. So this is x squared plus 3i x minus 3i x minus 9i squared. So in the same sense, because you have the positive and the negative, the middle terms also cancel out positive 3ix minus 3ix, they just cancel out. And now you're left with x squared. Now here's the difference between this one and this one. This is minus nine times i squared. Now you know that i squared is equal to negative one. So this turns into plus nine. So when you have the imaginary parts here, it turns it to positive nine. So thinking about this, what multiplies to positive 9 and adds to 0, the only thing you can do is negative 3i and positive 3i. Now this here, x squared plus 9, is called a sum of squares because x squared and 9 are both perfect squares, and then the sum is the plus sign. This here is called a difference of squares. Same reason for the squares, but the difference is the minus sign. Now notice the difference of squares came from two real factors. The sum of squares came from two imaginary factors. So for a difference of squares, if you have x squared minus a squared, you end up with x plus a and x minus a. Both real, x squared gets broken up to x and x, a squared gets broken up into a and a. If you have a sum of squares, x squared plus a squared, you're left with x plus a i and x minus a i. So in the sum of squares, you have imaginary roots. One of my students a couple years ago came up with the expression, add the i's. So that's how they remembered it. They had the plus sign and they said, add the i's. So when you see the plus sign, you're thinking, okay, I need i's in my factored expression. So let's do a couple of examples before I end this video. So if you factor completely, you have nine x squared minus 16. So the first thing I see is that I have nine x squared and 16 are both perfect squares. Nine x squared is equal to three x squared, and 16 is equal to 4 squared. So if I rewrite it like that, that's a tool that people use because it reminds them of the x squared minus a squared. Because I have a minus sign, I know there's going to be no i's in my answer when I factor. So this one here is going to be equal to 3x plus 4. 
and 3x minus 4 or I should say times 3x minus 4. So this is my fully factored expression for 9x squared minus 16. If you want to double check your answer, you can multiply it back and make sure it comes out to 9x squared minus 16. For example 1b, I have 4x squared plus 9. 4x squared is a perfect square. It's 2x squared. And 9 is a perfect square. It's equal to 3 squared. Now, in this example, I have 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4. A lot of people struggle with where do I put the i's. Now, the 4x squared is going to be positive because you have a positive times a positive. It's not the first term that changes plus and minus. The second term is where you're going to need the i's to show up because it's going to be if you had 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3, that would give you 4x squared minus 9. But I need this to turn into plus 9, so I need it to be minus 9i squared, which would give me, I need those i's right there. So it's the second part of it that you include the i's. So this is a difference of squares, sum of squares. No i's in your answer, i's in your answer. Let's look at one example from example two and one example from example three. So in example two, notice you see x cubed minus 9x squared. Neither of those terms are perfect squares right now. You also see in B, 8x cubed plus 32x. Neither one of those are perfect squares either. So sometimes you can take out a GCF in order to get going with this. Between 8 and 32, there is an eight, a factor of 8 in there. And between x cubed and x, you can also take out x. So this is also tying in the last um, version of factoring that we learned, which was GCF. So when I take out 8x, I'm left with x squared plus 16. Oh, no, plus 4. 32 divided by 8 is 4. So x squared is a perfect square. It's x times x. 4 is a perfect square. It's 2 times 2. I have a plus sign here, which means I need i's in my answer. So this is going to factor into x plus 2i, x minus 2i. And then I put the 8x out in front. So this will be fully factored. So I took out a GCF. I looked at what was left. What was left was a sum of squares. And then I factored that. Be very careful that you take out the full GCF when you do this. All right, the last one I'm going to do is 3a. So this one is x to the fourth minus 256. x to the fourth is equal to x squared squared. So that's a perfect square. Actually, any even exponent is going to be a perfect square because if you think of the power rule, you would have something squared to get to an even exponent. So I have x squared squared minus 16 squared. Minus sign means that's a difference of squares. So that tells me this is going to be equal to x squared plus 16, no i's and x squared minus 16. The reason I wanted to do this problem is because we're not done yet. I see x squared plus 16, and that's a sum of squares. I see x squared minus 16, and that's a difference of squares. So now I have two factors that I can take even further. So x squared plus 16 is x squared and 4 squared, right? So this is going to factor out, there's a plus sign, so I need i's. So this is going to be x plus 4i and x minus 4i.
x squared minus 16 is also x squared and four squared, but it's a minus sign, so there's no i's in this one. So this is going to be x plus four, x minus four. So your fully factored expression here is x plus four i, x minus four i, x plus four, x minus four. So this is something new and something we're definitely gonna have to practice. Um, and this is your first glimpse at your imaginary factors.